Hello and welcome to Hardway Learning, where we look stupid, so you don't have to. Today we are working on the 2004 Honda S2000. We are installing some coilovers. Not only some coilovers, but some O-links. O-links. And the first thing we're tackling is uh, getting the fronts off. The front top nuts are a 14 millimeter. The lower bolt is a 17 millimeter. Now, we are going to be fighting the sway bar a little bit, so I believe we might want to disconnect the right shot. But I don't know if that helps our sway bar situation really. I guess it just unloads the arms. We'll probably have to take the sway bar off, but we will see. Oh baby. I loosen these upper control arm bushings to allow the suspension to swing down. Okay, we also have a 12 millimeter for the bracket on the front strut to the brake line. We're also gonna loosen up. All right, 14 millimeter on the old sway bar end link. Well, I'm trying to get this uh, end link off. I don't know about you, but that nut seems to be a little bit messed up, you know? We are trying to take the end link off of the bar instead of the end link off of the arm. And we've sprayed all of the nuts with PB Blaster and now it seems to have finally broken free. So, we'll get the end links off on both sides and hopefully that'll allow us to drop the arm enough to get this, the uh, coil over off. Voila. Okay, here's our fresh front Olin's DFV road and track damper. We're gonna pop off the adjuster here. That's gonna be thread this all the way in, get it down to the zero adjustment, if, and then loosen it up with the 14 millimeter on the flats on here. Then back this down a little ways to get the spring on there to give the spring enough space. Don't have to go all the way down. <coughs> Fronts use the full length boot that's included. The rears we're gonna cut down because all four boots that they include are the same. Drop that bad boy on there. We are going to use four of these little probably just to prevent it from rubbing on here. The factory Olin's springs that are included are, I don't know if it's a 10K spring or if it's a hundred, you know, I don't know, whatever unit it is. Look at it here where Kyle edits it in. The fronts are the heavier rate, so it's this 100 at the end of the part number here. So these will be the fronts. Set that guy on there. And then there are spacers included for the front and the rear. The front uses the taller spacer, so it'll come with these two in a package. Um, tall spacer, and then we're gonna need the top hat. So now, pop it on there after that tall spacer. And then this is a like, sleeved spacer that fits in there nice, holds it in place. Now we use the, I think this is a 10 millimeter nylock nut. So it's the smaller of the hardware included. Not the smallest nut, cause this will be for the brake line. It's the middle sized one in here. These are gonna be for bottom. And we meet with the Thread that on as far as you can by hand, and then it's a five millimeter Allen key that'll sit in the top, but you wanna put your 14 millimeter. A ratcheting wrench makes this a little easier, but it's still just kind of a pain in the butt no matter what. Thread this guy down for a while. I got the nut down here, hand tighten it to approximately 20 Newton meters. And then the adjuster will thread back on. You don't have to really cinch this down too tight you just want to get it down and then using the 14 bottom it out and a little snug a little snug back it off so it's even i think based on somebody else's information we're going to back it off 10 clicks that's what allegedly the factory setting is i thought the booklet said seven but this owner's manual really looks kind of like a general piece of information so I'm gonna take the guy's word that 10 is the S2000 recommended setting. 10. And then we'll thread it to, we'll thread the spring to just 
snug, and we'll say that's zero preload, maybe. Yeah, I had to bring it up here because it was tight enough that I was struggling to get it to start, so I'm just gonna get seated and then just bring it up here until it's snug. And so what we're doing is just getting everything, all the bolts in place. So the upper control arm bolts in place, the lower shock mount bolts in place, the upper shock bolts in place, and then the end link bolts in place. And then what we'll do is preload the suspension arm with the floor jack and then torque all of those bolts. So it's really important that you torque your end link bolts with the suspension loaded as well as your upper control arm bushings because those need to be preloaded or else your bushings will fight you and add or subtract from your spring ring. 22 foot pounds on these 14 millimeter top nuts. The upper A arm bolts are 75 foot pounds, 17 millimeter. I need two 17 millimeter wrenches for the lower shock mount because it does not have a welded nut. So that way it's serviceable. And the torque spec is? 47 foot pounds. 47 foot pounds. To access the top of the struts, open your trunk. Remove carpeting. Trim tools. this strut tower brace right here. Do you think the AP1s came with that? Look at that bar right there welded right into the shock tower and everything. But anywho, Dan's gonna come in here and remove the upper shock nut, which I believe is a 14 millimeter. We had to pull the spare out to do that. No idea what happened. It seems to have recovered very quickly though. easy that was. You want to uh, start threading some knife. All right, so what we've done here is taken the preload out of the upper control arm bushing. So we loosened the 17 millimeter nuts. Now I'm gonna torque them back down to 97 foot pounds according to the Honda interwebs, the Honda Miata interwebs. So now I'm gonna torque this with the suspension loaded so that these bushings get preloaded in the right ride height. This is something I learned on my Mazda Miata. Now we're implementing it on our Honda Miata MX-5. All right, and then 47 foot-pounds on the lower control arm. The upper top head bolts are 36 foot-pounds, 14 millimeter nut. That's how you get the low low on your Bro, ho. Oh. The driver's side of the rear is the same, except you gotta remove the filler neck to gain access to the, uh, the top the strut tower. So we are removing this filler neck, which is these eight millimeter. Next, we're removing this 10 millimeter nut bolt. Yeah, shucks. I don't recommend it. The moment of truth. Will it be an okay ride height or will it be Slam Society? Oh, that looks pretty good. And it'll settle. Does it look like the rear is lower than the front? No. It it's lower good. than it was. Well, definitely, because we're at the we're on the low low guys and they are It looked balanced. It looks pretty balanced, yeah. That's what we're shooting for. That looks minty. And like not slammed. Like the mm -hmm. goal is to... Still enjoy the car. Yeah. Um, as a driver, as you should. <laughs>